G'day YouTube and welcome back to ASX Portfolio. Now today we're going to talk about why Brownian motion is an inappropriate uh, choice to actually model financial markets. Well, it's quite obvious because Brownian motion would model negative stock prices and of course this can't happen in actuality. So instead, we want a way that we can actually preserve some of these stochastic properties, the properties of Brownian motion, and then add this into the models that we want to create. So how can we do this? Well, here Brownian motion, the source of risk can actually be added into ETO processes. Now a well-known ETO process is geometric Brownian motion or GBM, which you would have heard of. So we're going to use the properties of this Brownian motion to drive the creation of new models that better fit um, actuality and real life examples. So what are we going to do? We're going to use a special type of calculus that inherits these properties of Brownian motion, this source of risk, um, and that is called Edo calculus. This is used in financial stochastic uh, mathematics. So today we're really going to try and understand what is an Eto integral and then how it can help us to solve difficult problems. We're going to be talking about Eto's lemma, which is like the identity in Eto calculus that can be used to, um, as a rule of thumb. We're going to be talking about the Eto Doblin formula. We're going to be talking about geometric Brownian motion dynamics and how they're derived. So if you want to listen to all that, stick around and learn more. So today we're really going to be talking about what's in chapter four here in Stephen Shreve's um, second book for continuous time models um, for stochastic calculus. So if you uh, want to learn more, I highly recommend this book. So what is an Eto integral? Well, essentially it's really important to remember that you have a filtered probability space. And this is the space of which all this mathematics is done onto. Now, if you're not familiar with probability theory, it's okay. Um, it is very involved and it's really what constitutes the first three chapters of that book. It is pretty involved, so really let's just speak through it. There's an outcome, there's a filtration, and then there's this probability uh, P. Now, really what the filtration is, is it's sigma algebra, which contains all the information up to time T. So an adapted a stochastic process, which is what we're going to talk about today, that filtration holds all the information up to time t. So we're not going to delve into that too much because it is very complicated and if you want to learn more, I really highly recommend getting this book and then uh, looking at the first three chapters. So here is what an Eto integral looks like. So we have this delta, which is a process. Um, we have an integral between you know, zero to t, um, which is our time frame. We've got our differential, which is this uh, dw. Now that's the Weiner process. So that's very important. But more importantly is this stochastic process that we have here, which I've just termed delta. So what I want you to imagine is that we're going to partition um, this time period from zero to big T up into sections. So we're gonna start from zero all the way to T and we're just going to partition that segment um, with even time spaces. So this stochastic process that we have here to the power of N, so N is just denoting the amount of time spaces uh, that we actually have, or N minus one time spaces that we actually have. Now, this is a stochastic process. So at time zero, you can picture that a coin is flipped and it's either heads or tails. Now, depending on the outcome, that is what sets the value of this delta zero. Now, you realize that process um, at, time, at time zero through to T1, and then you then flip your next coin and you work out what your next outcome is going to be. So this is a stochastic process, a stochastic adapted process. So um, you'll notice here that also the time periods are including the bottom part, but not including T1. And that is because in financial um, mathematics, it's really important to have the distinction of where you're actually calculating all these defined integrals over. We can't use information at T1 if we're not there yet. So in a lot of mathematics, sometimes you might use the midpoint to define um, your measures, but not in financial calculus. We only know the information for which the time period that we're in right now, not the one ahead. If we did, it would be a much simpler game. So now that we've partitioned this up, we can represent this integral in terms of the limit of some sum. Now that sum is this stochastic process for each of these time periods with this delta 
uh, the change in the winer process between those intervals. Now, as this goes to infinity, so those time periods become smaller and smaller and smaller, we then converge on this integral. Now, this limit only exists if two conditions are satisfied, and this is extremely important. So, this, so first off, we have to have an adapted um, process to this filtration. So to this F, funny looking FT over this time period, it needs, this process needs to be adapted. It also needs to be square integrable. So what is that? It's this thing called L2 space. So we're actually looking at this solution space. And what that means is that the expectation of this integral squared to the power of one over, uh, one over two needs to be finite. So we need to actually have a limit to this expectation and it needs to be less than infinity. So if these two things are satisfied, then this limit exists and the Ito integral um, can be calculated. So this is really what we want. So this is how the notation is defined. We have this process delta t, which is our stochastic process, um, and it's, it's, it's uh, square adapted. So what that is, it's just the square integrable um, process, and it's also adapted to filtration. So this is the notation that's used to describe that. So let's move on. Now we have an Ito integral. We're gonna talk about general Ito processes. So now we have a stochastic process i. Now that's happening on the same time domain with the same outcome space. So here we have the Ito integral, and this is just a first look at the general Ito integral. So you can see that we have a starting position, we have a time-based integral, and we have a stochastic-based Ito integral. So the first time-based integral is just a normal Riemann integral, an integral that you, um, my viewers on this channel, will be very familiar with if you didn't know the name. So this is measurable with respect to time and the Ito integral is with respect to this Weiner process, this stochastic process over time. So this is more often thought about as the drift term and the diffusion term. So that's pretty important there. Remember again that this stochastic process that now I've termed uh, sigma is actually part of this square adapted space. Now, the example of an Ito process is, of course, like I mentioned at the start, geometric Brownian motion. Now, geometric Brownian motion, um, we have this drift term and we've got this diffusion term. Now, diffusion has been set by a volatility parameter that's constant, and the mu is also constant over that time horizon. So that can be split up into this integral form of which we can see the initial stock price, we can see the drift term, and then the diffusion term. Now, speaking about that a little bit more, if we're now modeling this stock price with respect to this Ito process, geometric Brownian motion, well then I want to now consider that we can also have an integral of the Ito process. So the, the integral with respect to this Ito process might be your trading p &L. Now you can imagine that we have this um, time period of which we own uh, omega uh, th theta value of stock for a particular um, for a particular stock and then the change in stock price is represented here so this is really talking about a strategy that holds theta units over the stock between a certain time period 0 to t this integral of the Edo process will yield the trading PL so we can already see some really useful applications of why we need to understand Edo processes and how to actually do the calculus that's special about them. Now, I just wanna quickly say, what is special about Edo calculus? Why is it different from normal calculus? Well, if you remember when in our Brownian motion video, and I'll make a link in the top right hand corner, it's very important to remember that this Brownian motion stochastic process has quadratic variation. This quadratic variation is accumulated over each time period. So this is the important distinction and the calculus is a little bit different. So we've got this defined Edo process for underlying price ST. Let's say we want to value some kind of financial contract. So here I've denoted that as CT. So we've got the stock price and we've got time. Now this could be a European call option, could be an Asian option, could be whatever you want. But point is we have a financial contract. 
what we would really like to understand is what is the dynamics of this contract? So the change in this contract's value with respect to some certain parameters. You could think of that in terms of the delta, the gamma, all of these risk sensitivities in terms of option pricing. So the way that we can actually start using the mathematics and laying the mathematical foundation is we're going to consider a very small time step dt and then we're going to use the Taylor expansion. So here the change um, of the function in, with respect to s, we have the change in s with respect to this very small time period. We can actually approximate that to be the function of the price right now plus the change. Now you'll notice that as the Taylor expansion and what you can do is have infinite terms out here. So here's just the Taylor expansion, very regular mathematics. If you're not sure about it, please just Google it and click on Wikipedia. Now, once you have the, this formula right here, we'll notice that the terms get very large, but there's a lot that we can cancel out. And here's, let's understand why. So let's say that we have GBM dynamics um, of this form. So each time to the power of k, you have the, the Eto process, the dynamics here, the drift term, and then the stochastic term to the power of k. You can do this, and it is in the book, by considering the actual Weiner process with respect to itself. So that integral, um, Eto integral with the uh, dynamic stochastic process actually being a just the Brownian motion, then um, if you also consider that this function that we're talking about is just the quadratic function, so a half x squared, well then it can be shown that as dt approaches zero, then the dt to the k terms that are greater than one converge to zero very quickly. The same way dt, d, um, dws, so these are the cross terms that happen when we multiply the drift with the uh, Weiner process, they converge to zero very quickly as well. And that's the same for uh, the Weiner process to the power of k greater than three. So they all converge um, to zero very quickly. So Edo's lemma is the identity used in this Edo calculus to describe those, that process and to make it easier um, to do the maths on the fly without having to prove it mathematically each time. So really what you need to understand is that we're going to retain terms up to the first order for the time increment, so dt, and then the second order in the Weiner process increment. And it's very important, the reason we're keeping that because as the dt approaches zero, we discard those terms that we just talked about, but we keep these terms. So we keep dt and dwt because they're converging to zero at the same time, at the same order of magnitude as dt does. But dt is actually equal to the Weiner process squared because of the quadratic variation. So the order of which this squared term of the, Weiner, the change in the Weiner process converges to zero is actually the same as the dt term. So we have to keep it around. So that's a simple explanation, perhaps oversimplified for some uh, people who are watching the channel. But again, if you wanna know more, please go and look at the book. So now we're moving on to Ito's rule. So now here, we've just canceled out the rest of the squared terms. And what we're left with is the first order and second order terms. Now remember that now we're gonna be talking about just a generic Ito diffus uh, drift diffusion process. So here we've got this mu t, and this varies over time, and we've got this sigma t. Notice now, this is not geometric Brownian motion, we've got rid of the sts here. So, given that we've got this gene generic Ito drift, I want you to consider this squared term here. If we square the actual um, generic Ito drift uh, diffusion process, then the only a term you are left with is this sigma dwt term. Why is that? Because remember the cross terms and then dt squared, they converge to zero. But what we're left with is sigma squared dwt squared. Now remember dwt squared can be approximated as dt for the quadratic variation. So we then can actually expand this into a dt term and then a dwt term. So by substituting this into our equation here, we can then get this equation below. Now the yellow there, that first order term, actually splits into this, um, 
this mu, the drift term, and then also the stochastic element provided by this DWT term. So they separate there, but you'll actually notice that the, uh, this second order term leads to a DT term. So this second order term actually adds to the drift of the process over time. So that's really important to keep in mind. Now, this can be generalized in the Ito Doblin rule, okay? So now for a generic process, that's really what we're talking about for a generic function, doesn't have to be quadratic. We have this process here. So we've got the change in, um, the step change from t to zero. We've got the first order um, integral with respect to s, and then we've got the second order. Now the second order is, to the, is times by a half, and it's with respect to this quadratic variation. Now I want you to remember that quadratic variation accumulates at a rate of the, um, the actual dynamic uh, stochastic process that we're talking about in our Edo integral squared. So that process there is signified by the sigma in our general drift uh, diffusion model. So sigma squared is actually the rate at which this accumulates uh, quadratic variation. Now, if we consider actually subbing in the um, stochastic Ito process in our DT here and substituting in the accumulation rate with respect to time that it accumulates, you can see that we can expand these terms. Here we have the, the mu, the drift term of our stochastic process gets left here. Similarly, we get the Weiner process, our stochastic process that's left from this term here as we incorporate our uh, Ito process within this D, DST term. And what we're left with here is that this accumulated rate turns into the, uh, that dynamic stochastic process, which is that sigma squared value with respect to DT. So this is the generic formula, um, the Ito Doblin rule, and it's very useful to remember this when you're doing any type of Ito um, stochastic calculus for finance. When we're actually considering two parameters, so for example, ST and T, well then we need to add an extra term here. Now this is the first order term with respect to this second variable T. So we just take the partial derivative of the function with respect to t. So now we've got this process, all we need to do is incorporate this new dt term. So the only change, the only term um, from the equation before is that we have this st, and I've forgotten the t there, but we've also got this um, new term which is with respect to time. So the partial, partial differential um, of the function with respect to time. So now we're going to talk about geometric Brownian motion dynamics. So we're going to start off with the dynamics, uh, the SDE, uh, the stochastic differential equation uh, at the top here. So if we then apply Ito's rule, but we're going to use the function of log s, log x, whatever you want to call it. The first differential is 1 over s, and the second differential is minus 1 over s squared. So now if we use that in our um, Taylor expansion that we just saw before. So now we're going to get the change in the log of st is equal to the first partial derivative, which is one over s divided uh, times by dst. Then we've got um, a half in our uh, Taylor expansion, so minus a half times by one over s squared to the um, with dt squared. So now what we can do is we can actually substitute in the SDE into the DST term. So here we're just substituting in this formula within the DST and we end up with the terms we're gonna keep, which are first order, and then the second order terms, which we're gonna get rid of the cross terms and we're going to exclude DT squared. So all we're left with is really this um, D, wt squared which is equal to dt so that then becomes a component within the uh, with respect to the time as does this mu so mu minus this sigma squared divided by 2 with respect to time now the component that becomes stochastic again is part of this first order um, term and that is then just sigma uh, with respect to the change in the Weiner process 
So now expanding on that a little bit more, what we're gonna do is put that in integral form. So we have log ST equals the log of SO. Uh, so our stock price at the initial time period, plus the integral um, from zero to T with respect to the drift, and then an integral, a stochastic integral, um, Edo integral with respect to the Weiner process. Now, if you actually integrate these, then what you get is this formula here, which I'm sure a lot of you will be very familiar with. And then if you actually consider that, that's the normal distribution um, with respect to this mean and this variance here. So the log of ST has this uh, log normal, well, the, the stock has this log normal distribution. So the log of ST has a normal distribution. That's kind of hard to say, but that's what it is. Now this can be written more explicitly and this is probably what you're so familiar with. Um, and as part of that in our video last week, we showed how to actually produce, um, to actually simulate geometric bounding motion using this formula. This is the explicit formula, formulation of ST with respect to our Weiner process. So all you have to do for that is um, take LN0, uh, take the logarithm of the initial stock price to the other side, um, then you get log ST over um, S0, take the log to the other side, which gives you the exponential of all this term, and then take SO to the, the right hand side. So go away, do that in your own time, understand the dynamics, and hopefully I've given you the background now or at least uh, some of the intuition around ETO processes, ETO integrals, so you can go away and perhaps start adding to this stochastic differential equation terms that you want to uh, fiddle around with or other popular models and really use ETO calculus um, to drive and understand some of the dynamics that are inherent with that model. So. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you got a lot of value out of that. Stay tuned for next time because we're just going to continue to go into uh, the mathematics. We're going to continue implementing in Python and hopefully these two concepts come together cleanly. So thank you very much for listening and see you next time.